So a couple of weeks ago, my wife took our four-year-old son, my wife Kim took our four-year-old son to the store, I think it was Target, to pick up some household items. Nothing profound about that, but while she was there, she found a clearance rack. And on the clearance rack, apparently, was a pair of boots. I don't know if it was rain boots or snow boots, what it was, but they were boots that fit my son. So I was like, yeah, I can't pass that up, so she buys them. She comes home, and all four of us were, were emptying the bags. And my wife picks up the boots and goes, man, those are heavy. She turns them over, and out falls a pack of AA batteries. Now, AA batteries were on my wife's shopping list. So apparently what happened is she explained that she had gotten them off the rack. She had handed them to my four-year-old son who wanted to be helpful. Instead of putting them in the cart, he put them in the boots. So my wife didn't know that. The cashier didn't know that. We get home, she turns them over. Oops, we've accidentally taken the batteries without paying for them. Now, honest mistake, right? We weren't doing anything devious. My son wasn't trying to steal anything. It was an honest mistake. But all of a sudden, my my wife's tying her shoes again. She's putting the shoes of my son back on. My my daughter notices this and goes, Mom, what are you doing? So my wife explains, look, we took these batteries. We didn't pay for them. We got to go back and we got to make it right. We're going to go back to the store and pay for them. It was a teaching moment. A teaching moment that my wife certainly did not anticipate in the course of her day, but when the opportunity struck, she seized on it. We are talking about teaching today. That's our second topic in our One Another series. We are how we teach one another. And last week, if you joined us, I talked about how in humility, when we are humble towards one another, when we submit to one another out of reverence for Jesus Christ, we get teaching opportunities. People will notice. People will notice us doing something, and that's our chance to teach. But I'm going to expand the idea and say that Every moment we have in life is a teaching moment. We're always teaching. St. Paul picks up on this in his letter to the Colossians church, which is going to be our theme verse today, verse, chapter 3, verse 16. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another. With all wisdom, through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. Teaching and admonishing. That's what Paul encourages us to do as we treat one another, we deal with one another. And teaching is very simply, I would say, just, just to define it is do this. We teach people what to do. Admonishing is the opposite. We, we teach them what not to do. Don't do that. Teaching and admonishing. And for the sake of this series, or this sermon today, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to lump them together under the topic of teaching. Now, our gospel reading we heard Judy give us a little, moment, a little while ago actually has Jesus teaching and teaching in multiple forms to his disciples. And I want to kind of go through it today, what he's doing, because it worked out really well. I mean, that was like signed reading for today, and I didn't plan it that way, but it works out. Jesus is teaching. Why not teach about teach Jesus teaching? Now, Jesus teaches in multiple styles. He doesn't call attention to what he's doing, but in the years since, educational theorists have recognized different modes of teaching. They call them curriculums, teaching curriculums. And I was doing research on this. I'm not an educator. There's like 11 different styles of curriculum out there. But for the sake of this sermon, I'm going to present five of them to you. Five that we see in Jesus' life and the life of the disciples. And just for the sake of consistency, if you're an educator, I'm going to use the actual titles that, that we use. So let's get going. The first type we're going, to teach, we're going to look at today is called explicit curriculum. Explicit curriculum is basically what you intend to teach. It's your topic. For us in the church, it is this. The Holy Bible. We teach the Bible. That's why we encourage you to be in God's Word, to be in a Bible study. There are several meetings right now. There's more on Wednesdays. We encourage you to get together with believers, study God's Word together. This is what we want you to study, God's Word for us. Now, in Jesus' day, obviously, he didn't have the New Testament. It hadn't been written yet. He had the Old Testament, but Jesus is still intentional about what he teaches. That's his, his explicit curriculum, and we see that in what I, like I said, in our reading from Mark chapter 9 this week. Mark chapter 9, we start this way in verse 30. They left that place and passed through Galilee. Jesus did not want anyone to know where they were because he was teaching his disciples. He said to them, the Son of Man is going to be delivered into the hands of men. They will kill him, and after three days he will rise. But they did not understand what he meant, and they were afraid to ask him. 
Jesus carves out intentional space to teach. I mean, he's traveling the region and the crowds are circling around them because he's healing, he's teaching, he's drawing a lot of attention, but he wants to teach them something specific. He has something they need to know, and it's the mission of the Messiah. That's what he wants to teach them here. So he carves out intentional space to teach them that the Messiah, the Son of Man, will die at the hands of men on a cross, and then three days later, rise again. This is his explicit curriculum. It's kind of like math class. You know, we all had math class. There's that math textbook. That's what we're supposed to learn, right? You might learn other stuff in math class. I don't know, but the math is what you're supposed to be learning. But I know I can say for certain, I didn't learn everything in that textbook. I didn't get it. The disciples don't get it either. We heard it in that last verse there. They didn't understand it, and they were... They were unable to, unable to ask why, unable to ask questions. Maybe they're too frightened to ask questions. They didn't understand what Jesus was explicitly trying to teach them. So Jesus has to switch styles and he gets his opportunity. We go on to the next verse, next two verses, 33 and 34. They came to Capernaum. When he was in the house, he asked them, what were you arguing about on the road? But they kept quiet because on the way they argued about who was the greatest the disciples are doing what the disciples seem to always do in the Gospels. They're arguing about who is supreme among them, who's superior. And Jesus seizes upon this moment to teach a second teaching style, which we'll call overt curriculum. An overt curriculum is the moments that happen in life that allow us to teach intentionally a concept. And Jesus seizes on this, his ability to say, hey, wait a minute, here's a moment I can, I can reinforce and, and amplify what I just said in my explicit teaching a moment ago. So Jesus sits them down in verse 35. Sitting down, Jesus called the 12 and said, anyone who wants to be first must be the very last and the servant of all. Because of their behavior, Jesus is given an opening, an opportunity to overtly teach what he's trying to teach them by sitting them down explaining the first must be last. We kind of talked about that last week. That was the humble topic, right? Remember, when we're humble, like I said in the beginning, people see us. People see us, and that's our opportunity to teach because that's an opening, an opportunity to explain to people what we're trying to do. I mean, that's what happened with my wife. She wasn't planning on teaching our kids right from wrong, how to correct a mistake, but when the opportunity arose, she seized it. She took opportunities that came, but see, as I mentioned at the beginning, we're always teaching. Whether she did it explicitly or not, there's another style that fits nicely into it. It's called implicit curriculum. Implicit curriculum is how we carry ourselves, what we're doing in our lives. Do what, does what we teach and how we behave line up? We've all heard of Christians being called hypocrites, right? It's because somebody noticed you're teaching this and you're doing this and they're out of sync with each other. It's the explicit what we teach and the implicit of our lives, how we carry ourselves, aren't lining up. So think about Jesus. Remember what Jesus said, anyone who wants to be first must be the very last and the servant of all. The Apostle Paul describes Jesus as the firstborn of creation. Jesus is first. But he's the Messiah, and his mission is to come and be killed by men on the cross and rise again in three days to save us from our sins, point us to everlasting life. He is the first that becomes last and a servant of all. That was his explicit teaching. And when the disciples are arguing, he takes their moment to reinforce what he was teaching about himself. Say, hey, if you want to be like me, if you really want to be my disciples and follow me, this is what you got to do. You got to stop worrying about being first. You got to be last and the servant of all. Now, Jesus doesn't explicitly talk about implicit curriculum here. He lives it out, right? Think about Jesus' ministry. For three years, he travels through villages, healing the sick, driving out demons. He went where people needed him. He didn't turn anybody away. He served and was a servant of all, right? On, at the Last Supper on, on Monday, Thursday, when he institutes Holy Communion, like we just celebrated earlier, after the meal, he gets down on his hands and knees and he washes the feet of the disciples. He's a servant of all. He willingly goes to the cross and dies. He's a servant of all. What Jesus taught explicitly, what he followed up with overt teaching, overt curriculum, he lived out implicitly in his life. He lived what he taught. Imagine when it happens when it doesn't line up. I mean, think about my wife. 
in that moment when we realized we've stolen the batteries? What if she goes, it was an accident. Target's a big company. They'll never miss it. What if she says that? What does that teach our kids? I mean, we like to teach the Ten Commandments at home. Thou shall not steal. But in that moment, we're creating a disconnect. Maybe it's thou shall not steal if you're going to get caught. If you're not going to get caught, don't worry about it. It's not that big of a deal. That's what we've been teaching our kids if my wife hadn't acted in that moment. But instead, she takes them back. Now, think about what it teaches. She didn't call attention to what she was doing, but think about what it teaches everybody around her. She goes to the returns line, the returns counter at Target with my son there. And she says, hey, we walked out of the store with these batteries we hadn't paid for, and we're here to make it right. Imagine what that teaches the person behind the counter. Imagine what it teaches the people standing behind her in line that hear the conversation. She doesn't call attention to why she's doing it. She's just making it right, and that teaches something. That's implicit curriculum but how we live our lives. And there's a, the fourth one I want to talk about is null curriculum. Null curriculum is very sim similar to implicit curriculum. Null curriculum is what we teach when we intentionally don't do something. What does it communicate when we intentionally refrain from teaching something? Like think, about, think about this task right here, this preaching task I'm doing right now. Right? Now, I've been here for a little over a year. Pastor Lee has been here for a quarter of a century now. It sounds a long ways when you talk about it that way. Have you ever heard myself or Pastor Lee ever give you a sermon on how to brew a really good cup of coffee? How to get the best rate on your mortgage? How to tune a carburetor? No, I mean, those things, those are topics that have a place and are important to somebody, but here, right here, we teach Christ crucified. We teach salvation in Jesus Christ. And by not focusing on those things here, we're drawing attention to what we're doing here. That's null curriculum. By focusing on what isn't important, you're teaching, or by ignoring what isn't important, you're focusing on what is important. I like how the Apostle John says it. At the end of John's gospel, he not only gives a summary of his own gospel, but kind of the whole Bible. He says this, but these are written, so in here, that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in His name. The Bible is written to teach us about salvation. There's a lot of things we want to know about in life that the Bible doesn't cover. It doesn't talk about dinosaurs. I love dinosaurs. The Bible doesn't talk about dinosaurs. Why? Because it's not central to the message. And by not addressing it, and a lot of other topics, John rightly points out the point, purpose of the Bible is to teach salvation. So what about us in our homes? How does dull curriculum play out, maybe adversely, in our homes? What happens if we don't talk about Jesus and God at home? If we don't pray before meals or before bedtime, we don't do devotions as a family, what does that communicate in our households? Does it communicate that God's a good topic for this place, but at home, he's not really that important? What happens when we don't teach? What does it say to the people around us? If you're somebody who's not used to praying, not using the devotions at home. This is your chance, and I encourage you to start because that lines us up with our, with our final curriculum I want to look at today, which is called hidden curriculum. And hidden curriculum isn't what we teach, it's how we teach it. How we carry ourselves, how we behave that communicates something. Again, think about the preaching task right here. When's the last time any one of you asked, raised your hand and asked a question in the middle of a sermon? Doesn't happen, right? Think about the space. All these chairs, you can think about this at home. All these chairs, all these people, they're all facing this way. They're all circled. Guess what you're all pointing at? Pointing at that, the cross of Jesus Christ. I mean, that's behind me, so when I'm preaching, I'm representing God before you. Remember how I opened today? We talk about the good gifts of word and sacrament that God gives us in this worship. We are in a posture, in a position to receive God's good gifts to us, spoken by me. That's my job to speak to you. That's hidden curriculum. We set up the space to imply something. We're receiving what God gives us. Let's go back to our, core, our main verse for today from Colossians that Paul writes. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs. I was talking to Pastor Frank, who does the traditional service this week, and he, he had a really great quote. Just said it right off the top of his head. Repetition is the mother of learning, he said. 
Repetition is the mother of learning. That's hidden curriculum he's talking about. It's the patterns we have in life and what they communicate. I mean, think about the songs we sing. I mean, the song that will be our closing song here in a moment, I've sung that song dozens upon dozens of times. I love that the song. I want you to sing out because I love that song, by the way. But when we sing over and over, the repetition does something. The repetition gets into our hearts, gets into our minds. It teaches us something by the way we perform. So if you're, in, if you're looking for rituals to start, I want to invite you to several rituals that we got going. First of all, Wednesdays. Wednesdays at 6.30, we have the Bible studies going on along with confirmation class for adults. You're all invited. Remember when I was talking about the space here? that You can't really ask questions. It's not really conducive. I'm the type of learner who likes to ask questions. I learn by debating and arguing, frankly. I love those type of conversations. And if that's you, if you want to learn more about this topic, if you actually have a problem with what I say and you want to express it to me, come on out Wednesday, 6.30. We're going to intentionally create a hidden curriculum, a space conducive to conversation. Also, the first Wednesday of every month, so that'll be October 6th, we're going to have a special Bible study on Wednesday night, 6.30 again, called Tough Questions. Tough Questions is a space where you can ask whatever you want to. If you want to ask about a carburetor or a coffee, go for it. If you want to ask about dinosaurs, go for it. We want to create a space where every question is valid in this church. That there's no place, you don't have to check your brain at the door. Come in and ask the questions that are on your heart. We're gonna create an intentional space, that's hidden curriculum, that allows us to share and explore this creation together, centered around God's word, of course. If you are looking for rituals, you notice that table, like I mentioned earlier, out in the, out in the point. Evan and Christine have created this book called How to how to help your kids grow in the faith. It's free to families. Pick one up after the service. You can talk to Evan. You can talk to Christine after the service and no more. This is a starter. It's topics, ideas to do explicit and overt curriculum, to be attentive to implicit curriculum and hidden and overt and null moments. I almost forgot null. Moments where we can teach one another. This is a starter to help start rituals in our homes. Start curriculums in our homes where we can teach one another. See, it's clear Jesus taught. And it was second only to dying for our sins. That's what he did the most. He taught. He taught in everything he did. He taught. He had a plan to teach. He taught when the moment arose. He gave us the example of his life. The disciples were attentive to that and said, this is what we're going to focus on. It's Jesus Christ. And then they would gather together weekly for worship, to come together and receive what God had given them, like we're doing right now. Hidden curriculum. See, we have a chance to teach and admonish one another. We have a chance to teach everyone Jesus Christ. Because we're teaching in everything we do. So let's point to Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Pray with me, please. Lord God, you give us opportunities to teach. Your son came down. And on his path to the cross, he missed no opportunity to teach us. Teach us about the kingdom of God. Teach us about your plan for creation, how we are to treat one another. Lord God, as we carry through our lives, give us your Holy Spirit that we would see those opportunities to teach and admonish one another through everything we do, that we may preach the gospel, that we may glorify your most holy name. It's in your son's name that we pray. Amen.